Welcome back to Harbour Unbox for another Vega related video. This time we're overclocking and undervolting to see what kind of impact this has on Vega 56's performance. Shortly after my 32 game benchmark comparing the entire Vega lineup to the GeForce 10 series, I started getting spammed with messages from viewers asking me to do some undervolt testing as they suspected this really helped to improve Vega's efficiency. In fact, the graphs I was sent showed up to a 22% increase in frame rates while reducing total system consumption by 20%. What kind of magic is this? This made little sense to me, but I was keen to see what kind of improvements could be made to Vega with a little tinkering. So for now, I've played around with the air-cooled reference design Vega 56 graphics card to see if it can indeed become a GTX 1080 Founders Edition killer, or is that just a fairy tale? At the very least, we should get a good idea of what will be possible with Vega 56 once some more efficiently cooled board partner cards become available. But before we get into the benchmarks and the settings used, a quick shout out to Videoblocks for sponsoring this video. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Videoblocks, they have one of the fastest growing and largest stock video libraries on the internet with 3 million videos, After Effects templates and motion backgrounds. This includes the only contributor marketplace that gives 100% of the commission back to the artists. Videoblocks is an amazing resource for anyone creating videos, whether you're a professional or just someone looking to have fun and create some neat content, they have plenty of footage to spice up your videos. There are basically endless options and you'll have no trouble finding stock footage to suit your needs. I myself spent hours just enjoying the nature section. And importantly, all of the footage comes with a royalty-free agreement, so you can't get hit with copyright claims. Right now, if you sign up, you get a seven-day Videoblocks trial, so you can try it out and get access to their massive royalty-free video library for free. Go to videoblocks.com slash YouTube or click the link in the video description below to start downloading and get seven days of Videoblocks for free. Okay, I'm done watching nature footage, at least for now, because it is time to fine-tune Vega 56. First up, I started by reducing the voltage from 1200 millivolts down to 1070 millivolts, and this was an 11% reduction in voltage. This alone did reduce power consumption by around 10%, but also reduced frame rates by 5-10% to as well. The next step then was to slightly raise the frequency from 1592 MHz to 1612 MHz and then increase the power limit by 50%. Finally, the HBM2 frequency was boosted from 800 MHz to 930 MHz, and this is the highest frequency I was able to stabilize the memory at. You'll see what kind of impact this had on performance in a moment. Then for the GTX 1070 FE card, I raised the base frequency from 1506 MHz to 1706 MHz, and this resulted in a GPU boost 3.0 frequency of around 2050 MHz. The memory was also increased from 8 gigabits per second to 9 gigabits per second. Finally, the core voltage slider was maxed out at plus 100%, and the power limit was set to 112%. Alright, so with AMD's reference model and Nvidia's found edition model, both quite heavily overclocked, how do they compare? Well, let's go find out. First up we have Battlefield 1 and here the GTX 1070 enjoyed a 15% increase in average frame rate once overclocked, though this only allowed it to loosely match the stock Vega 56 graphics card. Overclocking Vega 56 increased the frame rates by a further 12% and this does indeed allow AMD's more affordable Vega graphics card to match the GTX 1080, at least for the average frame rate. Moving on we have the Dawn of War 3 results, and here the overclocked GTX 1070 boosted frame rates by just 7%. Vega 56 did slightly better as it improved the average frame rate by 9%, and that placed it roughly on par with Vega 64, and well ahead of the GTX 1080. So a solid result here for Vega, it's not a massive 20% increase, but we'll take it nonetheless. Vega has already proven to be mighty impressive in Dirt 4, and here we see once overclocked, Vega 56 is able to match Vega 64 with an impressive 119 FPS, and that makes it much faster than the GTX 1080, and worlds faster than the GTX 1070. Meanwhile, the GeForce graphics card only saw a boost of 6% once overclocked. Moving on, the gains in Doom are fairly mild. The GTX 1070 was 6% faster once overclocked, and Vega 56 was 7% faster. Even so, the overclock did allow Vega 56 to catch the stock GTX 1080 in this test, so not bad, but not amazing either. That said, with frame rates in excess of 130 FPS at all times, I'm not sure how much it matters anyway. 
The gain seen in Far Cry Primal were mild at best, though, better than those seen previously in Doom. The GTX 1070 enjoyed a 9% bump in frame rate, while Vega 56 did hit double digits with an 11% increase. Now pushing over 90 FPS on average, Vega 56 is quite impressive, though not a GTX 1080 killer here. When testing with For Honor, we did see a very healthy 15% boost in performance for Vega 56, and it is now delivering air-cooled Vega 64-like numbers. The GTX 1070 wasn't quite as impressive, and overclocked it did fall further behind Vega 56. Both the GTX 1070 and Vega 56 GPU saw measly gains in Mass Effect Andromeda, around 5% more frames on average were seen here. Overclocked, the margins between these two GPUs remained much the same, and they did both turn in results that were lower than that of the GTX 1080 in this title. Moving on to the Mirror's Edge Catalyst results, the GTX 1070 was boosted by just 4% once overclocked. Meanwhile, Vega 56 spat out 8% more frames and was seen delivering Vega 64 light performance and wasn't much slower than the GTX 1080 here. Overclocking Vega 56 does certainly help with performance in Overwatch, and while it trails the GTX 1070, the margin is slightly reduced, at least when looking at the average frame rate. The 1% low results are still concerning, but at well over 100 FPS, it's probably not really a big deal. Testing with Prey, the results are much the same once overclocked, though Vega 56's 1% low result is more impressive now, and match that of the air-cooled Vega 64 GPU. Overall, we did see an 8% increase in frame rates for Vega 56 once overclocked. Both GPUs see a 6% increase in average frame rate once overclocked when we're testing with Resident Evil 7, and this was enough for Vega 56 to match the GTX 1080, uh, a stock GTX 1080 I should add, but still an impressive result all the same. The gains seen in Titanfall 2 were very minimal for both the GTX 1070 and Vega 56 GPUs. If we'd seen more results like this though, we'd have to conclude that it's really not worth the time invested to overclock these GPUs. Nearing the end of the benchmarks, we have Rise of the Tomb Raider, and we see an 8% increase for Vega 56 and just 6% for the GTX 1070. Certainly not mind-blowing results, I'll admit, but Vega 56 is now able to match the air-cooled Vega 64 graphics card. Finally, we have Ghost Recon Wildlands, and again, some more mild gains can be seen, and they're not really worth getting excited over. So then I'm going to wrap up the FPS testing here, and let's move on to check out the power consumption figures. Um, okay, I can't say these results are at all surprising, but given the graphs many of you are showing me, it might surprise some of you. So, out of the box, Vega 56 pushed total system consumption a little over 30% higher than that of the GTX 1070. Certainly not a good result, but since it was generally a little faster, uh, it's not the end of the world either. However, overclocked, the GTX 1070 sucked down just 11% more power, and that meant it still consumed a lot less than the stock Vega 56 graphics card. Undervolting and then overclocking Vega 56 did certainly improve performance by anywhere from 5 to 15%, depending on the title, but it also increased total system consumption by an insane 35%. That explains why the blower fan was screaming like a jet. Okay, so based on that, it doesn't really seem like undervolting slash overclocking Vega really changed its position against the competing GeForce 10 series products. Overall, Vega 56 saw an 8% boost in average frame rate from our tweaks, while the GTX 1070 saw a 7% boost, so... Really, much of a muchness there. However, probably more importantly, while the GTX 1070 only saw an 11% increase in power consumption, Vega 56 saw a 35% increase. So while we succeeded in making both faster, we did make the GTX 1070 slightly less efficient while making Vega 56 miles less efficient. Since the aim is to improve efficiency here, at least I believe that's what many are getting excited about when it comes to Vega undervolting. It's not really the case. There's no doubt room to improve on efficiency here, uh, at least slightly, while keeping the performance of Vega 56 pretty close to what you get out of the box. Uh, of course, gains will vary from card to card though, and I certainly can't see you slashing power usage by 20% while maintaining stock performance. Still, if we look at the results seen in Battlefield 1, Dawn of War 3, and Dirt 4, for example, then there is a chance Vega 56 could come out well on top down the track. Of course, it's yet to be seen, but in terms of outright performance, I'd bet Vega 56 winning out pretty comfortably in the long run. As for efficiency, I'm not sure that's a battle that can be or ever will be won, but for most gamers, it's probably not really an issue. 
Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you guys found the results interesting slash useful, and hopefully they will tire you over till we get some board partner cards on deck. And finally, a big thanks to Videoblocks for supporting our work and offering viewers a free seven-day trial. Remember, the link is in the video description, so check it out. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time, guys.